Hello everyone, welcome to this video on ray tracing. In this first episode of this series, we're gonna be explaining how the ray tracing work. And in the upcoming episode, we'll program it from scratch using Python, and I will try my best to explain all the mathematics behind the ray tracing rendering method, which is just linear algebra actually. So, if you have some basics of linear algebra, then you can code along with us easily. Well, this series is for everybody, no matter what programming languages you use, as long as it's an object-oriented programming language, then you are good to go. Before we start, I'd like to say that you guys should definitely check out these books. They helped me a lot when I was learning about ray tracing, especially this one. Definitely check it out, gonna leave the link in the description for all of these books. And I strongly suggest you to read this article for a simple explanation of the ray tracing. Well, without further ado, let's dive in. In real world, what we see is essentially the result of light hitting the object in our view. But the varying degrees to which those objects absorbed reflect the light determine how everything looks at us. The ray tracing works nearly the same way, except that everything generally moves in the opposite direction. This process begins with projecting one or more rays from the camera through each pixel and then checking if the ray intersects with any object. If the ray does hit an object, the algorithm uses the property or material of that object and its distance from the camera to help determine the final color of the pixel to display on the screen. In addition, rays may bounce off an object or go through it, creating more and more rays to measure. Tracing a single ray through a pixel isn't sufficient to produce a realistic image. The more rays, the higher the image quality and the higher the computing cost of course. This technique of simulating vision backwards is far more efficient for a computer to handle than trying to trace rays from the light source. After all, the only light paths that need to be rendered are the ones that fit into the camera view. It takes far less computing power to display what's in front of you than it would to render the rays emitted from all the sources of light in the scene. The downside of ray tracing is that it is so computationally intensive as to be impractical for the need of real-time video game or heavy visualization, but if you got this, that shouldn't be a problem. Companies like Pixar usually use it in their animated movies, and nowadays it's widely used in real-time video games since computers and the consoles are improving their computing power. And uh, that's all you're gonna need to know about ray tracing before we start making one. Thanks for watching the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe.